G'day everybody. This video I'll be explaining when you may want to use the other adaptive step switching conditions for time traffic lights in city skylines. I'll go through each of the four other step switch conditions in turn and provide several example situations where you might want to make use of these. First is the someone is driving or flow greater than zero condition. This means that once the minimum time has passed, this step will switch away as soon as any vehicle enters the intersection. If the next step is a red light, then only one or two vehicles will pass and the rest will have to stop. This is kind of weird for trains because it can, depending on the acceleration and the length of the train, cause the train to actually stop midway through the signal. I should also point out that while editing this video, I added these phase diagrams because I felt that it was difficult to look at all the green and red lights to figure out what's going on. So I hope this diagram helps you to see what movements are allowed in each step and what step is currently active. The main use for this type of switch condition is spacing out vehicles in a one-way traffic system. Or to put it another way, ensuring a fixed gap between vehicles. A real-world example of this would be a highway ramp meter, which is used to break up platoons of vehicles so that they don't try to merge onto a busy highway all at once, causing slowdowns on the highway. So let's say we have an entrance ramp leading into a highway. In order to add a signal to a highway ramp, you need to use node controller and change the node type to something that supports signals, like custom. Step one of this traffic light is going to be the green light step where vehicles move. The minimum time can be as low as zero seconds to only let one vehicle through, and we'll be using the someone is driving step condition. The maximum time can be as high as 90 seconds, as long as we're going to see one vehicle within that time. The next step is going to be the red signal, and this will be the desired interval or gap between vehicles. Let's just say one second. We'll keep the max time the same, so the switch condition used here is irrelevant. So now we have a functional ramp meter. This highway is probably not busy enough to actually need one, but maybe the ones in your city are. Interestingly, you'll notice that trucks go through one at a time, due to their slow acceleration, but cars can accelerate fast enough and are small enough that they go through two at a time. <laughs> you can use this same sort of signal to insert much longer spaces than just one second between vehicles too. Like let's say you wanted to create a signal at a turnaround loop in your bus network to do bus unbunching for you rather than having all the buses queue up at the next stop to unbunch themselves. Moving on now to the someone is waiting or wait greater than zero condition, which will switch the instant that any vehicle is waiting, even if the number of vehicles waiting is lower than the number of vehicles moving. Note from the examples here that it switches as soon as the vehicle starts to slow down. So if the segment before the light is long enough relative to the speed of the vehicle, the step will actually switch before the vehicle even arrives at the signal. This switch condition is quite useful for the step that precedes a step with a very high priority movement, like for buses, trams, or emergency vehicles. Traffic signal preemption is the technical term for a traffic light that detects vehicles approaching the intersection and preemptively changes the signal before the vehicle arrives. I also noticed that Wikipedia gives the same examples of high priority movements that I gave, emergency vehicles and transit vehicles. So let's say you have some sort of a transit way, like a busway or a tramway, which crosses a major road, and you really want the transit vehicles to be considered high priority and experience as little delay as possible. I'll set up this light first with the car traffic on the road, with green in both directions. Uh, the minimum time just needs to be long enough to clear the queue of vehicles, let's say 5 seconds. Maximum time should be much higher than the gap between buses, so I'll say 99 seconds for now. And the switch condition will be this uh, newly introduced weight greater than zero condition. The second step will be for the buses. Uh, the minimum time just needs to be equal to however long it takes a bus to cross, let's say two seconds. And the maximum time can be the same, so the switch condition for this step is irrelevant. So let's introduce some vehicles and see how it works. You'll notice that the light will switch just as the vehicle starts to slow down. So if the busway is long enough and the vehicles are traveling slow enough, they may actually not even need to stop. Or if they do stop, it'll only be for a very short period of time. So now we have traffic signal preemption for this busway intersection. If you have a lot of pedestrians, you might notice that sometimes buses have to stop for pedestrians who haven't finished crossing the junction yet. 
you can solve this by splitting the step that has a green light on the main road into two and only allowing pedestrians to cross during the first fixed time step. The second step that has flexible timing won't allow pedestrians to cross at all. As long as buses come frequently enough, it won't be too much delay for the pedestrians to wait for the next bus to pass the junction before they're allowed to cross themselves. Next up is the no one is driving or flow equal to zero condition. This step will switch as soon as the minimum time is up if no vehicle is going through the junction or is about to enter the junction. This is actually a fairly useful step switch condition and I use it quite commonly for three different use cases. Firstly, you can use it to ensure that a high priority step is fully completed before switching away from it. As an example for this, I can go back to our busway junction and modify it so that it will work better if multiple buses arrive simultaneously. I'll go into step 2 and change it so that it only switches back to step 1 when nobody is driving is true. Then I can change the max time to 5 times longer than it was before, about 10 seconds. While I'm here, I may as well go into step 1 and decrease the minimum time a bit from 5 seconds down to 3 seconds, as I noticed that 3 seconds was usually enough to clear the queue of cars on the road. This traffic light should now work much better if multiple buses arrive at the intersection at the same time, as the signal can flexibly extend up to 10 seconds until no more buses are detected moving into the intersection. Another thing you can do with the no one is driving step switch condition is you can use it to skip a rarely used step that almost never sees traffic when you use a minimum time of zero seconds on that step. The next example I'm about to show you was inspired by a passage from the US Department of Transportation's signal timing manual. In their section about split phasing, it gives an example of a four-way intersection where one of the two side roads has high volume and the other has very low volume. It suggests that you can skip one of the split phases to have the intersection function more like a T intersection. So let's do that. Let's say you have a T intersection between a really busy arterial road and a slightly less busy arterial road. But then maybe you also have a local street entering into this same junction, which is not good road hierarchy, but it's a really good way to illustrate this signal. Step one I have for the vehicles that are making the turn from the big arterial onto the small arterial along with the non-conflicting through movement and the free right turn from the smaller arterial. The minimum time here is just needs to be enough to clear the queue. Let's start with 10 seconds and the max time up to 16 seconds and I'll use the default step switch logic. The second step is mostly for the other through movement on the big arterial that didn't go in the previous step, but we can do both through movements at the same time using the same timings and switch as the first step. The third step is for all the movements off the smaller arterial. There's less traffic on this road, so the timings can be less. Minimum of 4 seconds and maximum of 9 seconds. If I expected pedestrians would often be crossing over on this step, I'd have to extend the minimum time so they have time to cross. These last steps are where the magic happens. Step 4 is for all the movements from the local street. This is a step that will often skip, so I will use a combination of a 0 second minimum time and a no one is driving step switch condition. The maximum time just enough for a few vehicles, like 5 seconds. Step 5 is the left turn onto the local street, using the same settings as step 4. I'd love to let the non-conflicting through movement on the big arterial go here, but I should only include in this phase any movements that I think will be skipped. Now let's see how it works with some traffic. Because this local street is only serving a coal power plant complex, it's only going to see a few trucks. So, or maybe some occasional service vehicles. You see this cycle has a pair of trucks waiting to leave, which means this final signal is actually going to proceed. There we go. But then it totally skips the turn into the local street because there's no one waiting there. Notice also that one of the four pedestrian crossings had to be removed from this junction because the associated vehicle signal could be skipped and there's not enough time for the pedestrians to cross. If step 4 and step 5 were usually being triggered because there was usually vehicles waiting, I'd probably change the way this is set up. But you can see from this cycle that there's no one waiting on step 4 and step 5, so it skips. So the final use for this step switch condition is for delaying a pedestrian crossing green signal until there is a gap in the traffic so as not to interrupt the flow of traffic on the road. In Traffic Manager Present Edition, Time traffic lights don't respond 
to cyclists or waiting pedestrians, they don't count them as waiting vehicles. So the waiting is always equal to zero. This means that your pedestrian signals have to always be on a timer. They can't respond to demand, at least demand from pedestrians or cyclists. Pedestrian signals can, however, be set up to respond to the demand of vehicles on the roads, and we're going to look at two examples of that later in this video. I'll show you one such way that you can set up a simple timed crossing, for example, a pedestrian pathway making a staggered crossing across a divided roadway. I've set up step one to be for the vehicles on the road, and I'll set the minimum time to be 45 seconds that pedestrians can wait for the cars, and then I'll have a maximum time of 60 seconds. That gives us 15 seconds for the signal to wait for there to be a gap in traffic before no one is driving and it can switch across to the pedestrians. Step two will be for the pedestrians to start crossing. I'll just use a simple three seconds for this. Step three will be for the pedestrians to finish the crossing, and I'll just leave that at two seconds for now. You'll see in this example that as we reach the end of the 45 second car phase, a big platoon of cars arrives. But instead of switching across to pedestrian phase and making these vehicles wait, it extends the signal until there's a gap in the flow of traffic before switching across to the pedestrian signal. This makes this type of signal suitable for areas with low pedestrian traffic and where you want to prioritize vehicle movement. Now we're on to the final and probably the least useful condition, which is the no one is waiting, wait equal to zero condition. This step should switch to the next step if there's no vehicles waiting at the light. Conversely, it should extend the current step to the maximum time if vehicles are currently waiting at the light. Why would you ever bother switching a traffic light if there's nobody waiting? Well, the only example I can think of is if the sole purpose of this light was to stop people. After all, there's no sense keeping that step going if it's not actually serving its purpose of stopping all traffic. My next example intersection is inspired by this paper by Blair Turner and colleagues, which lists 10 things you can do to roads to improve their safety. Example number five on this list is called a rest on red signal, which is a signal where the default phase is red for vehicles and only switches to green once vehicles have slowed or stopped at the intersection. It suggests this is a good idea for areas with lots of pedestrians, so I'm going to use it for a busy pedestrian crossing. Let's look at an example where you have a busy pedestrian and cycle path crossing a not so busy street, where cars may struggle to cross due to the sheer number of pedestrians and cyclists. Phase 1 is going to be the phase this light is going to spend most of its time in. That's going to be green for the pedestrians and the cyclists, and red for the cars. The minimum time just needs to be long enough for a queue of people to cross the road, but let's go with 10 seconds for now. The maximum time needs to be long enough that you'll probably see a car in that time. It's not just going to time out. Let's go with, say, 100 seconds and switch when someone is waiting. In this case, it'll be when a car starts to wait. Two is gonna be our waiting phase. This is the phase where we make the car drivers wait, even though we know they're already waiting. I think 10 seconds will be a long enough of a delay for this. Step three will be a short phase where all movements have a red light. This will allow time for pedestrians to finish crossing before the cars start. I'll give this one second minimum time and five second maximum time and use our switch if nobody is waiting condition. That way, if cars are waiting, we give pedestrians a full five seconds to cross, but if for some reason no cars are waiting, we'll only need the one second. In phase four, cars can go while pedestrians are stopped. Minimum time could be as low as one second, but I'm using four seconds in this demo, and I've set the maximum time to 10 seconds and paired it with a switch when nobody is driving condition so that it can clear anything less than 10 seconds of queued cars. Unfortunately, it seems like this step switch condition is currently bugged. You can see that step one triggers, it detects the waiting cars, so clearly the wait value is greater than zero. But by the time we get around to step three, the value reads wait equals zero for a split second, and so the step ends too soon. Kind of annoys me, I wanted it to give a long red signal when cars were waiting, and only use a short minimum time if there were no cars. But maybe by the time you watch this, this bug has been fixed. So that's all the examples I can think of where you'd actually use these other step switch conditions, illustrated here on this summary table. You'll probably still be using the more waiting than driving condition for most steps at most traffic lights in your city. But I'm hoping I thought of all the situations where you'd want to use something else. If you think of an application for these other conditions that I've missed, please let me know in the comments.